Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm doing a review on the Rugged Oculus 22 suppressor. I'm gonna try and include as much information in this video as I can. Um, hopefully some that was left out in other reviews to give you a better idea of what this suppressor is all about. Uh, but I'm gonna get right into it. They say this can is full auto rated. Uh, I don't have a full auto, but I got something that's pretty close. So let's see how it does. Drum mag, binary trigger. We could do something with this. Close enough. <laughs> All right, guys, so obviously that's not full auto, but it does give you an idea that the can does hold up for itself. So that's awesome. But, anyways, now we're going to take it back. We're going to shoot it on this pistol here. We're going to shoot unsuppressed K configuration and full configuration uh, just to give you a real good idea of what each level sounds like when shooting the suppressor. But yeah, let's give it a shot. All right, guys, let's shoot this pistol unsuppressed to get a baseline before we put the K and full configuration suppressor on there. I got my ear pro in because this will make your ears ring. Okay guys, so now we have the K configuration on there. Please keep in mind this piece right here is a quick detach adapter. This does not come with the suppressor. I will be taking it off later when I get down to the nitty gritty stuff to sort of show you what the actual length looks like. This is just for ease of uh, taking it on and off the guns. All right, so let's see what the K configuration sounds like. guys so you can sort of hear that ring through the hills and if you compare that with unsuppressed it's a lot less noise downrange um, but overall very quiet at the ear doesn't hurt your ears doesn't irritate your ears nothing like that overall very awesome very impressed with a little can like this I think it's like three and a quarter inches like that not a hundred percent but very impressed with the K configuration all right guys so this is where it sort of gets fun um, just listen for yourself. If you really, if you go back and you listen, and you listen to the it ringing through the hills, when you put this last module on there and you get the full length, it's just extremely quiet. The noise doesn't carry. The noise at the end of the gun is super quiet. I mean, this is this is a good can. All right, guys, I'm going to take a few steps back, shoot a few rounds. I'm going to do unsuppressed, then full suppressed, just to give you an idea of what it sounds like further away from the camera. All right, guys, so you got to see what it's like on the pistol. Now let's try it on a rifle. Sounds completely different on a rifle. I have an 18-inch Ruger Precision Rimfire here. So we're going to shoot both supersonic and subsonic through this. Uh, when you do that, you can really tell the difference because the supersonic crack still rings through the hills, suppressed or not. The subsonic does not. So let's see how it does. Supersonic. Subsonic. So those are actually pretty similar without a can on. Now we're going to run the K configuration with supersonic rounds. At the ear, absolutely quiet. Downrange, that supersonic crack still rings through the hills. Okay, now we got a subsonic round with the K configuration. Just ridiculous, guys. K configuration, 18 inch barrel, subsonic. That is crazy. And that's going like 1,050 feet per second. So you're close to the sound barrier, just not there. All right, guys, so I got it rigged up with the full length Oculus on there. We'll, we'll try uh, supersonic here. Again, you can hear it ring through the hills, but no noise back at your ear. Absolutely hearing safe. 
All right, now is where it gets crazy. Subsonic, about uh, 1,050 feet per second, full length Oculus. Just ridiculous. This is quieter than than a Red Rider. We'll hit the steel here now. Hitting the steel is way louder than the gun shooting. All right, guys, that's just crazy. Now I'm going to walk back, do the same thing, let you hear it from about 15 yards away. All right, guys, we had fun. We got to see what it sounded like in the K configuration and the full configuration, but now I'm gonna go back down to the house and I'll sort of get down to the nitty gritty uh, with what this baby's all about. All right, so we're back from the freezing cold. Um, it is January in Wisconsin, so sort of got to deal with that. But anyways, earlier in the video, I said that I was going to uh, try to cover as much as I could about this suppressor, but I lied. I guess I'm more or less gonna hit the top pros and cons that you guys need to know as a consumer to sort of uh, make up a decision on if it's a suppressor you want. There's so many other videos that talk about specs and all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to forget that stuff and talk about what you need to know. Okay, guys, so starting with the pros, number one on my list is definitely modularity. The fact that you have two cans in one for one price is super cool. Uh, you can break it down uh, 3.25 inches to the K configuration, which is just barely bigger than the Bowers Biddy. Um, but it's not dedicated. You can bring it back to a full-sized can. So if you wanna take some weight off, take some length off, um, still have pretty good sound suppression, you can do that. And then if you want, uh, screw back on the top module and you got a full-size 22 can. I just, I think that is super awesome, uh, really cool concept. And uh, yeah, definitely the top on the pro list for the Oculus. Second on my list is the fact that it is completely stainless steel. That is a big pro for me because I like to use my Sonic Cleaner and I can just, if this thing is really caked up with a lot of rounds that went through it, I can throw the whole thing in, soak it, uh, run the Sonic Cleaner, then pull it all apart, break it apart, makes it a lot easier to break apart. And then, uh, yeah, you don't got to worry about um, aluminum or the titanium, they say pitting in the Sonic Cleaners and whatnot. It's just super easy, very low maintenance to take care of. So on the other aspect of it being stainless steel, it can shoot 5, 7 by 28 through it. And not only that, it's belt fed rated full auto. Uh, that's crazy that this little 7 ounce can can handle that much power going through it. Uh, really impressive to me. But the other cool thing is, is I don't want to get into uh, larger bore pistol suppressors. I think it's cool that I can buy a 5.7, a full sized 5.7 pistol and have it fully suppressed with this little light can uh, shorter than regular suppressors. I can put it on a... 5.7 carbine as well, shave off a bunch of length, a bunch of weight versus bigger cans. I think that's a big pro in my book. So to wrap up the stainless steel part of it, it's nice because this thing is super tough. Uh, I've dropped it quite a bit. I When I clean it, I'm super rough with it. I literally put a copper brush and a drill and I drill the heck out of the baffles. Uh, I'll take a, a screwdriver and scratch that on there to scratch off all the carbon and the lead buildup. And this thing holds up just fine. I've never scratched it really deep or like put a dent in it or anything that I thought would compromise the strength of the can. So I just like that I can be really rough with it and not worry about it breaking. In the event that you ever do break this can, whether it be a baffle strike or whatnot, the nice thing is they have a full lifetime warranty. Uh, they'll replace the can if you ever break it. Can't complain about that. Before I bought this suppressor, I wasn't happy that you had to have a takedown tool. It's a weird looking thing that sort of fits into all these little grooves up here. I was like, uh, what if I lose that piece? What if I forget it when I go out shooting? The cool thing is you don't really need it. All you do is press your uh, palm into it and you can twist it right off, take it off, disassemble it, put it into the K configuration. All you really need is the palm of your hand. Works really nice that you don't need the tool. I think that is a big, big pro. Lastly, just a couple more things. The uh, serial number location is on the bottom of the can. Everybody loves that in the event that you do get a baffle strike. It's going to happen up here away from your serial number and you don't got to worry about waiting another 8 to 12 months for 
your new Nespresso to come back, which again is covered under the warranty. Another small thing, in the middle here between the two modules, they have a O-ring and that O-ring seals both the gas from coming out the side and also creates a very nice friction lock once you screw it down and it locks right there. You don't have to worry about the top module ever walking off because of that. So I'm really happy that they got that there. That was something, you know, if you shoot a lot of rounds, sometimes your threads will walk off the gun. You don't got to worry about these threads walking off either. One more thing I got to mention on the pro list. Uh, it was really cool when I was looking for the not this silencer, but when I was looking for a 22 silencer, I asked both my local gun dealer and silencer shop what they thought the best 22 suppressor was, and they both came back and said the rugged Oculus 22 was at the top of their list. Silencer shop actually listed it above the uh, Dead Air Mask. I thought that was pretty cool. That being said, it was just a customer service email, so that's not speaking for the whole company, but the fact is they both said this can was the bomb, and I can attest it is the bomb. So onto the cons of the suppressor. There are a few cons you gotta know. Um, none are a huge deal, but they are all something that you should know before you make this purchase. So first starting with the baffles. The baffles are extremely hard in my case. I don't know if it's the same for other people, but in my case, they're extremely hard to break apart for cleaning. You can always take this first stack and pop it apart pretty darn easily. But when you get into taking these apart, you can't really just get your fingers on them and pull them apart. So what I ended up doing, I went and bought a wood dowel that fit inside here. And I just put the wood dowel in and I take just a little hammer and I hammer the wood dowel, move it, hammer it, move it, hammer it. And it breaks it apart every which way a little bit at a time until it finally breaks loose. Um, unfortunately, I have to do that for every other baffle that it doesn't break apart the first time. So that's a big count on my list. I like ease of cleaning and this is not the easiest to clean um, in that aspect. Uh, I listed the other aspects that is easy, but this specifically, not very fun to break these apart. Another thing I don't like in the cleaning aspect is the fact that the base does not unscrew. So you get a lot of your lead and carbon buildup right here on the sidewalls, and it's really hard to get in and clean like this. You really can't. Uh, so what I decided to do is take a screwdriver, jam it in at an angle, and just smack it with a hammer, twist it, smack it. Um, it gets to be really easy once you get a system down, but it'd be a heck of a lot easier if you could unscrew it to get to the problem area. So besides that stuff, um, another difficult thing with this suppressor is lining up the top stack with the bottom stack. If you line this up perfectly, like they're perfectly lined up, and then you screw this cap on, once you get down to the base and you feel friction, well, the cap is touching the top stack. So then you keep tightening and it will twist your top stack a little bit and it won't align correctly with the base. So you can see in the center here, there's sort of a like little key shape. Well, you're supposed to line that key shape up with the base and then when you screw it on, it doesn't line up. So what you have to do is twist this back a little bit so it's out of line and then twist the top on until you're, you're looking at it and you can see they're all lined up perfectly. That's for repeatable impact shift. Well, when you shoot a bunch, and you don't really care about having your holes hitting the same spot, yours plinking or whatnot, you can just put it in there, screw it on. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't change the sound that I've noticed. Um, maybe it does on a meter, but it's really not a big deal. Um, not something that affects me all that much, but for you guys that want to hit the same hole every time, it might be an issue for you. It'd be nice if they had it self-indexing. My last big complaint about this suppressor, if you're like me and you like to recess your suppressor into your handguard, uh, if you tighten it down too much onto the barrel, sometimes the top module will actually spin off when you try to take the suppressor off. That's not good because then you got to take your old handguard off to get the base module off. Sometimes to deal with that, you can tighten the top down really, really tight and try and break it really fast to sort of overcome the friction of the base. Uh, that works for me maybe two out of 10 times. Normally you just got to take the whole thing off and it's a big ordeal that I don't like to deal with. Best way to overcome that issue is with the Gemtech QDA. I got another video out on this guy. You can really tighten this thing down and then just try lug it on off. Super easy to put the suppressor inside the handguard. But if you don't put your suppressor inside your handguard, it shouldn't be an issue for you. Earlier, I told you guys I would show you what it looked like on the pistol without the quick detach adapter. That's what it looks like right there. Very nice, very clean. Can't complain. And here it is, guys, in the K configuration. I just think it looks super cool on this. Very clean, very compact. Um, 
I like it in the cake configuration because if I want to take this out, keep it in the truck or whatnot, I can set it right on my center console and it doesn't take up a ton of space like it would with the longer extension on there. Um, and it, it's nice because I can shoot my pistol and not worry about hearing damage. Very, very nice. Yeah, guys, I guess that's all I really got for you, though, on the Rugged Oculus 22. A year and a half later, and I still get excited looking at this thing. Super cool, super compact, does a really good job suppressing gunshots. Yeah, it's overall a really cool cam. But otherwise, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I want to let you know I'm not sponsored in any way to try and sell you this. Uh, I, I'm just doing this video to help anybody who might want to get into one of these, sort of give you the ins and outs, pros and cons before you make that purchase yourself. Um, if I did a good job at that, feel free to subscribe, leave any questions in the comments. I'd be happy to answer those. But other than that, guys, keep shooting, enjoy your suppressors, and I'll see you on the next video.